morning, everyone. I want to welcome you to Calvary United Methodist Church and just uh, want you to know that it's a pleasure to be worshiping with everybody here this morning. Uh, a few announcements as we uh, go through the, the uh, announcements this morning. There's quite a few of them, so I'm going to go through them fairly quickly. But the Christmas Eve services, uh, 11 p.m. on Christmas Eve, and just uh, uh, want to encourage you to, to be with us. It's uh, going to be geared more towards uh, um, uh, children. And so just uh, encouraging uh, uh, you to invite your grandchildren, children, whatever that might be. Um, the second announcement I want to make is that Christmas Day service is going to be at 10 a.m. Um, just keep that in mind as well. And in theme, in the, the whole theme of Christmas series, um, the hat, mitten, and glove scarf tree is out in the, uh, the, the foyer next to the narthex. And uh, we're just collecting um, hats, mittens, gloves, and scarves. Uh, for Mary Daly Elementary School, and just uh, just keep that in mind, and so bring those things in, and we'll make sure that we, uh, uh, as the Christmas season wraps up, we'll get those connected over at Mary Daly. Um, the other announcement that we want to make is that the 2023 offering envelopes are available in the narthex. Um, feel free to, to pick those up on your way out, and just, uh, just to let you know that they're there, and if um, there's someone that you, you know would like to have theirs, uh, and, and um, just let them know that, that they're not here with us this morning as well. The, the last few announcements that I want to make are in line with the, the offering envelopes. I just want to um, thank you for the, this amazing year of giving. Um, you've been uh, faithful to, to the Lord in that, and we appreciate that so much. And there are uh, three different ways that you can give, just to let you know that they are present there in the uh, on that uh, um, slide, just to keep that in mind for the um, 2023 year coming up. And, and as we uh, just think about that, the, the next announcement I want to make is um, that um, your 2022 giving um, is, um, the deadline for that is Tuesday, December the 27th. So if there's something that you want to be able to give for this year, make sure that the church office has that by the, the uh, December the 27th deadline. So those are our announcements this morning. Let's go ahead and prepare our hearts for worship. Eternal God, we thank you for this opportunity to, to gather during this season of Advent to, to celebrate not only the, the birth of your Christ some 2,000 years ago, but also to look forward and hope to the day that you will return and to bring your consummation to your kingdom and to bring us into eternal pre your eternal presence. And it's in your son Jesus Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand together as we open and worship. table come taste the grace there's rest for the weary rest that endures earth has no sorrow that heaven can cure so lay down your Lay down your hurt. 
season of joy, we are reminded that Christ was born for all of us. But there are those who don't believe that. They've been beaten down by the world so much that they don't think they're worthy. So it is up to us to show by our love through our actions. Let them know that they can come as they are.
Kings and nations tremble at his voice. All creation rises to rejoice. Behold our God, seated on his throne. Come, let us adore him. Behold our
The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and, joy and rejoice with joy and singing. A highway shall be there and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be God's people. No traveler, not even fool, shall go astray. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The prophet Isaiah tells us about the joy of ascending to God's house. The prophet tells us to, to imagine being set free, being unburdened, being released to live to fully live in the grace and the wonder of life itself, surrounded by those who love us like no one else. And then he tells us that the journey to get there is just as much a joy. The psalmist says, happy are those who help, happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord, who made heaven and earth, who keeps faith, who executes justice, gives food, sets prisoners free, open eyes, lifts up, watches over, ups hold. The Lord will reign forever. Your Lord, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. We light these candles, the candle of joyous hope. The candle of proclaimed peace. and the candle of deep and everlasting joy. And we light them as a sign that we are those who walk with a skip in our step because we can see the destination and it's pure joy. We are ascending to God's promise. God, we gather here this morning just singing out our praises, rejoicing in all that you have given to each and every one of us and giving you thanks for that. And in the midst of this joyous song, in the midst of this amazing journey that we are on, this truly perfect highway that you have provided us to holiness, we're also faced with the fact that we are walking a journey that, that is also fraught with struggles. I know that each and every one of us has something on our mind. 
Maybe it's a situation that we ourselves are, are facing. And so we just pause for a moment to, to lift up those, those concerns. Maybe it's a physical concern, a relational struggle, spiritual struggle, an emotional struggle. We lift them up to you, O oh Lord, right now. And Father, we just ask that you comfort us blanket us in your presence. Allow us to know that you are with us. Allow your presence to just fill us with that peace and that comfort and that hope and that joy, knowing that this journey that we're on leads to something so much better. So we acknowledge our sorrows our hurts, our pains, struggles. As we travel your highway on in this wilderness that we are in. And so, Father, we also acknowledge your Son, Jesus Christ, and the joy that he brought in his incarnation to a world who also was struggling in so many different ways, yet so much like what we are today. We thank you for his birth. We give you praise for his birth, and we sing out in joyous exaltation, knowing that this world that we struggle with isn't our home. We thank you for his presence among us and the, the presence that he had with those disciples, teaching them so many different things. And Father, we just pray, just as he taught us to pray so many thousands of years ago, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. We'll be reading from Isaiah chapter 35, verses 1 through 10. The desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the feeble hands, steady the knees, that give way, say to loathe with fearful hearts. Be strong, do not fear. Your God will come. He will come with vengeance. With divine retribution, he will come to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be open and the ears of the deaf, deaf unstop. Then will the lame leak like a deer and the mute tongue shall shout for joy. Water will gush forth, forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool, the thirsty ground bubbling springs. In the haunts where jackals once lay, grass and reeds and pipers will grow, and a highway will be there. It will be called the way of holiness. It will be for those who walk on that way. The unclean will not journey on it. Wicked fools will not go about it. No lion will be there, nor any ravenous beast. They will not be found here, but only the redeemed will walk there. And those the Lord has rescued will return. They will enter Zion with singing, 
Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. May God add his blessing to the reading of the word. Eternal God, we ask that you allow the words that I speak this morning to be yours and not my own. And it's in the power of your Holy Spirit, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, that we pray. Amen. Well, it's already the third Sunday of Advent. Did anybody recognize that? I mean, it seems like Thanksgiving is coming and gone, and now we're to the third Sunday of Advent, one more Sunday. It's right around the cor uh, corner, and, and historically speaking, this Sunday, this third Sunday of Advent has been known as Godet Sunday, uh, which is marked by the pink or the rose-colored candle on the the altar or on the um, uh, um, the, the candelabra that we have up here. And, and on this Sunday, we're reminded of the news that shall be a great joy to all of the people. The news that God with us is born, our Emmanuel. You see, Gaudet Sunday is Latin for joy, and so we rejoice in the promise that even today, right here in this sanctuary, in your homes, on the street, that God is with us. And there is no greater joy than in knowing that. And so rejoicing is the rhythm of the Lord's highway, even though we continue to travel through let's call it the wilderness of life. Among this Sunday's liturgical readings, I'm typically given four of them to, to, to kind of ponder, uh, sometimes more, sometimes um, uh, um, um, in, in a different arrangement, but traditionally one from the Old Testament, then a psalm, and then, and then also a, a New Testament, and then the gospel reading. This morning I'm going to give you, we've given you the one from the Old Testament from Isaiah, but there's also a psalm every single Sunday, and, and this Sunday's is a psalm of joy. It comes from uh, Psalm 146. I'd encourage you to write that down and go read the whole thing. I'm going to give you a couple verses, but I'm going to start with verses 1 and 2. It says, Praise the Lord, O my soul. It's possible you've heard a song with that in the past. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live and I will sing praises to my God all my life long. We're also provided with this beautiful, this familiar um, text from Isaiah. It's uh, um, Isaiah 35. We read it from verses 1 through 10. And, and Isaiah reminds us that the redeemed, that's what he uses, the phrase that he used, the redeemed are traveling the Lord's highway on the way to Zion. And Zion is the hill on which the temple resides, in the city of peace. Now, if you've been with us for several weeks, you'll realize that the city of peace really isn't very peaceful, is it? Now, while the redeemed may not yet be there, they are on the way, and thus the redeemed are a pilgrim people. And they're singing songs of ascent. That's the title of this whole sermon series, as they go up into the presence of God. Now, there is no greater joy than knowing that God with us is with us on his highway as we travel to Zion. So let's claim this gift of joy as the body of Christ, as the redeemed despite the struggles on this difficult journey. Let's claim this gift of joy even as we pray for those who are hurting this morning. Even as we pray for those who are grieving this morning, let's claim this joy even as we pray for the lost and the alone. Now you may say, why can we be joyful? Well, we can be joyful because our God has promised the redeemed this healing and this wholeness. It's a promise. And he says in verse 8, it will be, it being the highway, it will be the way of holiness. Verse 8, it will be for those who walk 
on that way. It's a promise. And this promise is why we can sing out. Sing out songs like joy to the world. We sing them out to the one who dwells with us, who claims us, who heals us, who sends us out into the world. Rejoicing. It's the rhythm of the Lord's highway. And yet, there are moments when we don't feel like rejoicing. So why? Or what? What is it that keeps us from rejoicing as we travel the Lord's highway. What is it? And why is it? It's a great time to, to be talking about this, but you've heard the advertisements, you know, for the last-minute gifts. I mean, we're right around the corner from Christmas, right? Except that, in my mind, and maybe you're with me, it doesn't really seem like it's last minute at this point, right? It doesn't seem like it. It doesn't seem like Christmas is a around the corner. Uh, I mean, we have miles to go, uh, weeks to get things accomplished. We've got lots of time in many of our schedules, right? Sure, there are parties that we need to get ready for. There are gifts that we still probably need to get. There are decorations that aren't quite up that still need to go up. There are services to plan for. Notice, uh, on a, this is just off the cuff, but uh, Notice that one of the uh, pastors that I know is asking, uh, when are you going to be planning your services for Christmas Day? And I'm thinking, what? Shouldn't that have been done long ago? But we're thinking uh, there is more than enough time, right? So we really shouldn't be worrying about it, right? However, let me just say this, we are only two weeks away from Christmas as of today. The clock is ticking. Decisions need to be made, and questions must be answered. And then there is this whole other piece. Let me say it this way. It's really well in a a story that I, I read not too long ago. There was a new pastor, and he was celebrating his first Christmas at at his new church uh, with this new congregation that he was just getting to know. And as they they were decorating the communion table, he realized that the small ornamental nativity set was missing a vital piece. A central cast member was missing. More like the central cast member was missing. Let me see if I can get out of my back pocket because uh, um, it was a little bit bigger than I expected. It was missing. Janine's probably having a heart attack right now saying don't drop it. And so they looked, the congregation looked, the pastor looked, they looked everywhere. They even contacted the previous pastor who said that he kept it in his desk throughout the entire year. So the new pastor looked in the desk, but it wasn't there. And he was struck with panic that in the transition, maybe he had, I'm not going to do it, tossed the central character out. But no, he wouldn't have done that, would he? Would he have thrown away baby Jesus just because it was in the wrong place? Of all places, A desk drawer. Now, I'm going to encourage you to not go look in my desk drawer right now. That is the unexpected place to keep the baby Jesus figurine, right? The central door, you know, the junk drawer where you throw all of your stuff you don't really know what to do with. The hidden stuff, the forgotten stuff, the broken stuff, the stuff that is given by someone, well... You don't even remember who gave it to you, but, but you know that it's there for an important reason, right? The knickknacks. You know what I'm talking about. That's what's in the middle drawer. However, that is not a place for baby Jesus, is it? That's what he's thinking. However, he also thought, is there anywhere 
that Jesus does not belong? And so the more that the pastor began to think about it, he decided, well, maybe it was a great idea to keep the baby Jesus close. All year long. In the rubble of his life. Until he could be brought out at Christmas time to say, look, here he is. He's been here all along, right alongside the joys, right alongside the heartaches, through the struggles and the accomplishments, right there, somewhat out of sight, but close by, well within reach, even in the desert, in this place of exile, of uncertainty, Jesus was right there all the time, our Emmanuel. Church, while rejoicing is the rhythm of the Lord's highway, the rhythm of the wilderness, and let's be honest, we all have a wilderness journey, the rhythm of the wilderness is a struggle. It's a struggle for each and every one of us. I've heard the stories. You've heard the stories. And so again, I ask, what keeps you from rejoicing as you are traveling the Lord's highway? What is it? Most scholars talk about three different Isaiahs. Um, and chapter 35 is a transitional chapter between uh, what some call the, the first Isaiah and the, the second Isaiah. And the first Isaiah uh, is largely about warning, if you read through it, uh, trying to get God's people to see that their present course is, uh, is leading to disaster. Do you, do you feel that way some days? That the, the political relationships that they have created uh, will be their undoing. That's what Isaiah, uh, first Isaiah is really about. That their economic policies are unsustainable. That, that the road that they are on or were on would lead them to destruction. That's what Isaiah was saying in Isaiah, the, what we know as first Isaiah. And then as you move into 2 Isaiah, which uh, would happen to be written during the, the time of Israel's exile, is largely about hope, a promised return. And the writer is, is looking longingly for home. Maybe you're there as well. And from about chapter 40 on, there is this sense that, that all is not right with Israel, that all is not right with Judah. That, that the people aren't where they are supposed to be, then that, that they weren't who they were supposed to be. It's all wrong. There's this overriding sense of unease. And there is a word that says, it won't always be this way. It won't always be this way. The beauty is that this message doesn't come in some vague, impersonal way. It comes with exuberant joy. Did you notice that? It comes with um, lushness. It comes with an excess. It comes with a promise. It comes with security. It comes with um, creation's applause. If you read through the whole thing, it's amazing. The desert blooms and it blossoms and, and it's ushering the people back home. And the waters, which in that region are normally a temporary thing. They just don't, they're all the time. But they will break forth and it'll splash up, pouring out and, and rising high. It's like the rides at a water park or an open fire hydrant in a hot summer day in the city. All of the redeemed are winners on this journey to, to where they belong, and that is Zion. I don't know if you're familiar with this promise in the Old Testament, but, but I would ask, are you familiar with it? Relationally familiar with it? Are you familiar with the route home? Are you safe? Are you secure? Are you protected from, as Isaiah would write in 35 verse 9, any of the ravenous beasts? Are you on the Lord's highway? Church, there is a water to, to quench the thirst of the redeemed. And there is this 
un, ununderstandable divine G, GPS for these people that are redeemed. They simply can't get lost. And better than that, the aches and the pains of the redeemed, the brokenness and the infirmity, they're all going to disappear. Their disabilities uh, won't limit them. They won't handicap them. They can dance and they can sing and they can see and they can hear. And the beauty is that because of this journey, there is joy. And best of all, is it the redeemed? And maybe you can relate to this in some way. Maybe you know that someone else that can relate to this. The beauty of it all is that as the redeemed, you're not on this journey as a solitary individual where you've crossed all of those miles on your own and prepare yourselves to face a family who seems to, to both lift you up and tear you down at the same time. No, that is not what this journey is about. This is not about finding your own way. Why? Because God has come. God has come to bring the redeemed home. God has come to escort the redeemed home. God has come to walk with them every step of the way. No wonder there's joy. No wonder our sorrow and our sighing shall flee away. No wonder there is all of this dancing and singing and splashing around in the courtyard of creation's foundations why because God is with us that's the first reason the second reason there's rejoicing is very much like the first Isaiah tells the redeemed and I think that this is truly amazing that they have a purpose imagine living life without a purpose they have a purpose. What the redeemed will do is important while they're on the way to the home that God has prepared for them. The one that will make them whole for the first time in their entire lives. What's their purpose? What will they be doing? And that's what we should be doing. We should be sharing our joy. Isaiah writes in, in verse 3, he says, it's, it, it's a command, it's a directive, strengthen the feeble hands. Steady the knees that give way. Church, Isaiah isn't telling us what God will be doing. He is telling us what the redeemed should be doing. And he isn't telling the redeemed what God will do, but what the redeemed are supposed to be doing. By the way, it's not strengthening your own hands. It's not steadying your own or making firm, as some versions say, your own feeble knees, even though uh, oftentimes I feel as feeble as I can possibly be. I feel in need of strengthening, but that's not what the purpose is here even though our hearts are fearful, and at the best times it seems we are afraid. And I can tell you this, there are times when I hardly feel the best ambassador in the world of God's grace and his hope in the world. No, we are hardly the best witnesses to comfort and joy, as the song goes. Still, Isaiah gives us this command, this directive, the redeemed are God's vessels, the vessels that God has chosen to work with. So they are to be a sign, a witness that the journey home has begun. The redeemed are to be witnesses to God with us, our Emmanuel. That's our purpose. The redeemed are to be the light in the darkness, announcing to any and all that the season of joy and light and of peace and of goodwill is here. Isaiah writes in, in verse 4 of chapter 35, he says, Say to those 
with fearful hearts. By the way, this is a command to the, from, the, um, from Isaiah to the redeemed. This is what you are to do. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong. Do not fear. Your God will come. Do you hear the directive? Do you hear the promise? Isaiah is telling them, listen, God is right here. He is walking with us. He's walking on this road through the wilderness desert. That might not yet be blooming in your life, but he is still here. He is present and he is with us. The seeds are simply hidden away behind the paper clips, behind the rubber bands, and I'm not making any acknowledgments about it what's on my desk. covered up by the stacks of posted notes that just you'll never be able to use for all of your life. It's not covered up behind the business cards or behind the note that, that someone scrawled on the back of a bulletin reminding of you of who they really think you are. Underneath the drawing that some small child did with your head too big and your hands too swollen so some incredible size and, and the bubble coming out of your mouth saying Jesus loves you? No. Emmanuel, our God, is with us right here everywhere despite the wilderness that threatens to engulf us as we travel his highway. He's saying to the people, the redeemed, rejoicing is the rhythm of the Lord's highway. One of our friends I had reached out a long time ago and because I knew that uh, Advent was on its way to, to us, and I wanted to, to get some thoughts on their, their ideas of rejoicing or joy. And one of them uh, wrote back to me. Um, she said um, this about joy. She says, it seems that joy... And happiness are linked. But it seems that, that joy has, has a focus some, on something or someone. Uh, and she writes, I, I think of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Uh, write that down if you want to. I think of re Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Uh, and she says, we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. He kept his eyes fixed on God and the joy awaiting him after the cross. The joy of redeeming sinful man and doing all of God's required work to reconcile sinful man to God. His joy included a lot of pain and suffering, but still he had joy. And she continues, I am sure he, being Jesus, was frustrated with his disciples and the people's lack of understanding, but he still had joy. And she finishes, she says, to me, joy seems deeper than happiness, longer lasting, but still includes happiness. Rejoicing is the rhythm of the Lord's highway. That is why the redeemed are on this Christmas road, this Advent road, if you will, this desert road of ritual, celebration, this sand dance. Have you ever been down that road where it's really hot and you're walking through the desert and you don't want your feet to touch it. This highway of hope, though, this highway of peace, this highway of joy. God adet, the word that's used for this Sunday, which is Latin for joy, is more than just simply joy. It is rejoicing. It is a command. It is an imperative as we walk this road. Surrounded by the wilderness of the world that we're in. Why? Because rejoicing is the rhythm of the Lord's highway. 
I want to finish with this. Uh, and it's a part of this psalm, if you will. 146. Rejoicing, or I, let me start over here. Praise the Lord, it says, or my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to God all my life long. And church, that is and should be our directive. That should be our de declaration. And, and the tune continues in Psalm 146 and verse 5, and I think it's really important to, to hear these words. And it resonates with another more familiar declaration. And it says this, and you'll know where to look. Uh, it says, verse 5, Blessed are those who help whose help is in God, the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord, their God. Blessed are. While we cannot avoid or forget troubles, what we can do is sing. And we can rejoice as we march down the Lord's highway as we head toward the promised land, as we journey to the kingdom of God, and as we enter the gates of the city of peace, the eternal city of peace, and on up to Zion, where the temple resides. You see, rejoicing is the rhythm of the Lord's highway. So that, so that, Isaiah 35, verse 5, so that the eyes of the blind, we've got a purpose, the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped, so that the lame leap like deer and the mute shout for joy with us. That's what Isaiah writes. This is to be our witness to the grace and the mercy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for this opportunity to rejoice. And we ask that you allow us to feel your presence as we rejoice on your highway. And it's in your son, Jesus Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand as we close in worship. <laughs> Christian men rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Give ye heed to what we say. Jesus Christ is born today. Ox and ass before him bow, and he is in the manger now. Christ is born today. Christ is born today. Good Christian men rejoice with heart and Christian men rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now ye need not fear the grave. Jesus Christ was born to save. Calls you one and calls you all. To gain his everlasting all. Christ was born to save. Christ was born to save. Christ purpose extends to our purpose and it's in his name that we go traveling this road as we rejoice and it's in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit that we go amen mm -hmm.